Hello and welcome to Michael and Ivanka's Grand Podcast, a weekly instructional podcast where we talk about ourselves mostly, but occasionally a little bit about the subject that you might have clicked on. Uh, my name's Michael Forrest. And I'm Ivanka Magic. And this week we're going to talk about how to be your own boss. Because we're both our own boss now, aren't we? Yeah. Kinda. Although I suppose your husband is your boss, right? Are you like... No. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, he's male. Um, you're that's, female, that's so true, that's this true. goes yeah. stands yeah, to reason it, that it, uh, it, the patriarch should uh, be in charge. Yep, yeah, that's. Uh, Do you not agree? <laughs> that's exactly how it all works in my house. <laughs> right, uh, good. We all do as father says. <laughs> <laughs> you're notoriously subordinate, Ivanka. <laughs> yeah, it's true. And you love deferring to. Um, male author, just, any figure of authority, male, especially male any, authority figures. Especially male, I think <laughs> particularly enjoy male authority. Um, <laughs> so, in terms of working for yourself, I guess, um, yeah, we're gonna we're gonna talk about how to stay focused and you know not getting too bogged down in the details and perfectionism. How to sort of ship, actually, kind of finish stuff. Hmm. Um, and what to do when no one really cares about what you're doing anymore. <laughs> what have you got? I've got uh, time management and discipline, including mm. making sure that you stop doing work. Yeah, and maintaining boundaries. You're maintaining between boundaries. Between work and life. Yes, work-life balance, all that stuff. So we're going to... And we both... We, but I mean, I've had sporadic periods of being my own boss. You've, you, you're sort of like... Likewise, I suppose. What percentage yeah, are yeah, you yeah. your own boss these days? I, more, most of my work... I, well, I was thinking about this, the difference between a boss and someone you're working with, that mm. it's like our podcast. It works quite well that we have to... We, are, we, we have a responsibility to each other. So there are a couple of things I work on with somebody else who right. might not be the boss but definitely cares whether or not I've done my bit. Uh, and yeah, I care what they've like done horizontal. their bit. So there's that sort yeah. of, yeah. Okay, so, um, yeah, with that, let's play some title music and then get into it. How's it going, Ivanka? Oh, it's going very well. I have. I always start like that. Oh, well, should I try a different question? Yeah. Have you uh, had any unusual incidents in this last couple of weeks? <laughs> have you unusual. witnessed any unusual incidents recently? Uh, no, no. I've had. Okay, how's uh, it going? It's going. <laughs> I'm enjoying myself in my new home. My mother has been for yeah. a visit. It's been emotional Ooh. for all of us because it was a very short visit. Because uh, she's having a, she's doing a tour of the Balkans. Not really, but she's going to multiple people. And um, we we were allowed three days. We were granted a three day audience. Uh, but yeah, mm. so we've had a lovely time. But it's always a bit sad. Uh, so it's you know, and because I miss my mum. Basically, that's the other thing about leaving mm. a country is that I have quite a close family unit and. It's nice having your mum around because mm. also she seems to be have very special putting the child to sleep in the afternoon skills that I don't have. <laughs> so right. I might battle for ages and then granny walks in and waves her aura at the child and the child just freezes and goes to sleep. <laughs> granny said go to sleep. Um, so I could I could do with more of that. A little bit of gin on the thumb. Just a... Yeah, maybe that's what it is. <laughs> My... Uh, <laughs> I've been, I think I've got, we've got a new listener who's local. Right. Because I sent somebody a link to our podcast and she started listening. And then she came, she saw me in the morning, she goes, Frank, I listened to your podcast before I went to sleep. And then I couldn't sleep all night worrying about the state of the world. And I was like, oh, oh should, no. I should have warned. And then, but then we have had a conversation about what, how we're going to create some sort of local project and do some goodness. So that's good. And I went to awesome. see, the, I sat down with the head headmistress of the nursery. And I'm going to help them with their website. So, you know, hmm. I'm uh, integrating in my community. Um, so I'm quite pleased with that. Went to the, there was somebody had parked cars blocking our road. So I, you know, I don't really like 
authority, as you know. But I went to yeah. the I went to the count the local council and said, uh, "Excuse me, there's people parked in the wrong place." And they said, "We we will sort it." So I was very, you know, feeling very public spirited. That's that's it really. That's my okay. Those are some good stories. There's been some. Go- it's good. We, we we want to keep it short, though, don't we? Yeah, yeah. We need to. Not, but I really, I really feel like I need to be wandering around with a, some sort of note taking device that then, mm. because things, little things happen that I want. I thought, oh, that would be good. You know, I must tell Michael about that, or I must tell the podcast yeah. about that, or whatever. And then I completely forget what they are. But anyway, those are some good stories. I feel. Have you heard of the Notes app on your iPhone? It's quite good for that. <laughs> Oh, I know what it on the subject of notes app on my iPhone, because I needed I need a Croatian SIM card. I have purchased, so I have made a technology purchase, mm. but it's a reconditioned Fairphone. Ooh, wonderful! Mm. So how's it, it, how is it? Terrible. <laughs> <laughs> I haven't tried it yet properly okay. because I'm still waiting for the SIM card. Well, the SIM card arrived up on Friday, and so I haven't set it up yet. If I get a testing Android phone, I should get a Fairphone, shouldn't I? You should. Just realised. They sell reconditioned ones, so, mm. you know, which I think is even like, that's a step up from a Fairphone. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> like yeah. A, Good. That's a an second-hand tip. Fairphone, which I thought, and they take two SIM cards, so technically ah. I can go with my British and my Croatian SIM card in the same phone if mm. I'm going somewhere and don't want to miss a call. Mm. So... All How right. am I, you asked? Okay. What am I up to at the moment? Let's that, see. I did that exactly. That's exactly what I just asked. Right. I didn't hear. <laughs> what did you say? I did it on the inside. <laughs> oh, you did it on the inside. Okay, well, that's fine. <laughs> it's just the same. Um, sorry, I thought, I'd, I thought I'd like there'd been a Wi-Fi glitch or something. <laughs> I should have missed something. <laughs> no, no, no. Um, so in my, list of, in my list of things I'm going to talk about, I'm going to whiz through it just so that we can get to the meat of the episode quickly as possible. One, I saw... A next level thing that disgusts me on a TV show, uh, someone dipping a banana in some tea. Oh, my goodness. Disgusting. Why would you do that? Don't ever do that. That's gross. Um, I uh, took the Facebook app off my phone and have, I can report a 36% screen time reduction. And also that feeling that... So basically, I had, still have it on my, on my computer, but I, I'm basically not looking at it between when I finish working and come back in the morning. Um, so I've noticed that Facebook has still like no notifications, even if I leave it all night. <laughs> so <laughs> I think it sort of like sparks these kind of like, it tries to, it puts these token pointless notifications in so that each time you kind of come back, you feel like you're seeing something new, but I'm actually missing out on nothing by not looking at it on my phone. Whereas Instagram, I did put right. back on cause I felt like I was missing a few bits and pieces. Um, I was thinking about the username at real Donald Trump and why I hate him. Another reason I hate him is that having at real in the front shows that you are late to the party of Twitter and to top it, you ruined it for everyone else. And finally, in a roundup of my uh, recent man crushes, um, I've got a new one to add uh, yesterday, Nikki Case, who um, made that... um, that game where you take pictures of the little figures and if you take boring pictures, no one cares. And then if you take the interesting pictures for the news, then everyone sort of eventually murders each other. Um, who is Oh, back, yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, who did uh, in a Hacker Newsletter this week uh, was his uh, anxiety simulator, which was a good little demo of a game he's working on, as well as I played his coming out simulator, which was, it was tough. Um, you have to talk to your overbearing Asian parents about the fact that you've, you know, that you're uh, gay. Um, and it's quite hard to bring up <laughs> the context of an overbearing conversation with your mother. Um, so, yeah, that's my that's my man crush of the week. And also I noticed that I hadn't <laughs> mentioned my previous man crush of a couple of weeks ago, who is Wintergatan, who made, who's made the... You've probably seen the marble machine thing where there's this guy cranking this thing and it's this very complicated machine with all the marbles kind of falling down. They play a little yeah, tune. Yeah. Um, I didn't realise he had like a weekly behind the scenes like working on his next product project and it's all this kind of um, CNC like pl- uh, plywood cutting machine that he got 
donated by this company that does it in the US. And he, so he's got this, he's just like living his dream and kind of building this really nice uh, version two of the marble machine. Um, which the first one he'd sort of like hacked together, <laughs> just anyhow. But this time he's got doing all sort of sick computer aided design stuff and working with like t 10 other people. And, and it's all very impressive and quite, I just watched them all. And he seems like a nice What's person. What's he called? As well. Wintergatan, who I, I recommend both of you check out both of them. And I support, started supporting uh, Nikki Case on Patreon this week. So I'll be in the credits of his next thing. Cool. Mm. So he sounds like he's done some. Very, he does some really interesting. They, uh, do they get played as games? Yeah, it's like, like you know, like it's not just a social statement. No, well, they're they're they're, they're sort of interactive explain explanations. He sort of talks about. So it's like there's another one they did as collaboration, which was like showing how if you if people are if people want to live next to a certain percentage of people that are like them then sort of natural segregation happens automatically. But then if people right. become more tolerant, but that it doesn't change it, you still keep the segregation until you start to actively seek out desegregation. So that's, that's a really interesting, um, uh, that's another really interesting one. So I th think he's a really good systems thinker. And like, sh like okay. applying, and so, so some of the stuff I've been thinking about wanting to do is like, how do you, create a sort of game or something like that that helps people understand what's understand a mechanic understand a dynamic that might not be obvious if you just sort of said it in words but if you're actually like dragging little squares around you sort of get it pretty quickly right okay i might i might this might be a reason for me to investigate computer games oh. <laughs> i had uh, i did forget to mention that my mum came with her friend uh, so we had quite a lot of politics chatter mm. chitter chatter around the round the round the table of an evening mm. which i always enjoy with my uh and i i will say that i mean my mum's friend uh is they're both teacher retired retired ish teachers and they are i think there's lots of differences in our lives but there are some it's not it, there is something about uh i sort of i i feel the urge to report to the extinction rebellion that the 60 plus ladies seem to be big fans mm. <laughs> it's like uh, on my with my anecdotal research mm. i'd say there's a sort of a very positive response to all of that mm. uh the you know the extinction rebellion activities from ladies of a certain age have, um, have extinction so. rebellion got a sign that you can make with your hand no so like kind of the, did you did you see my instagram i put it on grand podcast instagram as well that there was a there was the chemtrails in the sky yeah. were a big cross right where, uh, uh. so i thought and it, the picture was it was hard to take the photo on an iphone mm -hmm. but so i'm not sure if i've it communicated well enough but but nick and i were on the beach we looked up and nick goes halifax would have paid thousands for that and i was like see that's the difference between you and me i was like oh extinction rebellion symbol in the sky <laughs> it's like, uh, so i was like oh, so, but he agreed it was too good an opportunity to miss <laughs> Anyway, so I, um, so that was, that was cool. It was cool having them around and having some politics chitter chatter. Over 60s, um, rebelling against extinction. Excellent. Um, I was, well, I was going to, I saw, have you seen these protests in Hong Kong? Um, yeah. About the extradition to China thing. Um, one thing yeah. I noticed was, one thing that I thought was quite powerful was how they had like, businessmen marching, people from the finance industry and things like that. And yeah. I, it occurred to me that maybe we should be, if we've got, if you've got a suit, you should be marching in your suit. Yeah. Right. You should definitely. be put your best uh, clothes on yeah. or whatever, like just so that it doesn't just look like kind of hippies. It, we're, we look like professionals as yeah. we're protesting. What do you think? I think for, in a, in a, yeah, I think in a world of prejudice, I think that it matters. Mm. I, I once, um, a long time ago, Oh gosh! Anyway, when they were like when the Iraq War was a was a twinkle in Tony Blair's eye, I used to go mm -hmm. after work yeah. and protest. Did I tell you this? So I'd go from my IT right. job no, no. with my smart clothes on and my my sort of laptop bag, mm. and uh, and I'd stand outside Parliament with all the other like there were very few people protesting, but there was maybe like 
50 mm. but I was the only person in a suit and this one um and I had Prada sunglasses at the time and this one Guardian photographer spent ages trying to get a picture of my placard reflected in my fancy glasses with my because it you right. know it, <laughs> but he couldn't you know he obviously didn't or he didn't sell it or didn't get a good picture or whatever but um it's I think it does matter for people to see that it's not the great unwashed or the usual suspects yeah. or you know these are the k- pillars of communities yeah here. yeah yeah well I don't know about proper pr- people <laughs> with like <laughs> proper jobs uh <laughs> Uh, well, you know, well, people who used to have people proper who jobs. could have proper jobs if they wanted. People, them. people uh, who c- could definitely get proper jobs if we didn't <laughs> think they were stupid. <laughs> Okay, so how do we be our own boss effectively? What's involved? So let's start with this. So I just, I just, I'm, I'm quitting contracting. I'm my own. Vo- I'm going to set fire to my CV. No more no, job interviews. <laughs> <laughs> this is me now. I'm my own boss for the for the for the foreseeable future. Um, but I've, so I've been spending a lot of time trying to. Um, because I worry the risks for me are that I, I don't know, just bite off more than I can chew. I don't plan properly and I either just don't, I, I sort of procrastinate about starting into something or because I'm not sure which is the right thing to do or I start on something which then kind of becomes all consuming and isn't maybe the quite the right thing to do. So I've been planning my, um, I've been sort of trying to, as I think of possible milestones or like calendar deadlines that that would be beneficial from a marketing perspective i suppose is what i'm trying to say yeah. like so the next apple the next ios launch or apple mac stuff is sort of september and the betas just came out so i need to probably make something that uses some fancy new apple technology so that they will Project, promote my yeah, app yeah, maybe yeah. in september um i want to get ahead of the new year this year uh for when my good habits app is sort of like makes sense for people to be interested in when they're tracking their new year's resolution I want to try and get ahead of that this year. And it's just like, okay, let's figure out all the milestones out. So it's, it's like I'm really trying to make sure that I'm thinking about what the focus is now because, yeah, it's if there's no one else forcing you to think about this stuff, it's, it's quite tempting to just sort of like noodle around yeah. and be a bit unfocused. I think... Uh, I think there's there's one part of this definition of be your own boss that I think we need to clarify just because your mm. definition is... Because for many people... I mean, contracting is self-employed, but that's not what you're talking about. You're talking about making... Well... Or, or are you? I, well, I think it could be because, you know, my brother's a plumber and I think he... Yeah, I'd, I'd, I'd like, I wouldn't mind talking about that as well. Um, I'm just like this is where I'm coming yeah, yeah. from. So, but we can talk about whatever. There's a, really. there's a mixture, and it's not not dissimilar, I don't think, but it's just that mixture of, you know, in some instances you're talking like with our restaurants, Brighton Jobs thing, that is definitely a product, um, and so hmm. therefore, and there's lots of things we could do, um, and then there's there's sort of selling your time and days, and then there's um, where you know yeah. I've got a few, I've got a, still got a couple of my own things going at the moment. Still, apart from the work on restaurants, Brighton jobs, I'm variously motivated by them. In like one's mm. really positive. Well, they're you know I, I tend to work on really cool projects, but then some some of the things you think you know I'm going to do this, and then no one's going to do anything with it. And how do I make it effective? And I find I personally mm. find that a bit paralysing. If somebody's yeah. just buying a little bit of my time, yeah. what do I do? that will mean that this thing comes to fruition properly as I envisage it. Envisage it? Envisage it. Envisage Some word like that that says picture it in my head. Mm. <laughs> 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 um, so uh, so that I think there is a slight difference. But I like, what, I mean, what you've said so far about thinking about 
the marketing opportunities and what you're trying to sell and because with launching restaurants brighton jobs that's very much at the moment that phase of this the making it and then Mm. there's the getting people to use it and there's yeah. two audiences. There's the people we want to post the jobs and then we, the people we want to apply to the jobs. And they're two mm. different groups, but also not. Um, yeah. So we've done a bit of... But, I mean, Nick's a bit... Where, what I, what you're doing in that planning out in the sort of Nick and Ivanka partnership, or my boss, Nick. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> he, he's the one who does the, right, like, this is the sales and marketing plan. We need to focus on, we've got these three, four things. So like we're looking at partnering with some people like the local college, but I've, that do, so, you know, I've, put, but then you can divide up the, the targeting. Um, yeah, I think that partnering partnerships thing is something to be paying attention to a lot. So you have so so the people you're so I think the difference is the difference I'm talking about is between having a boss and that can be either like you just work permanently for a company or it can be sort of like a sort of three month contract, one of those where you've got someone that you kind of like need to keep happy all the time. Yeah. Whereas I guess when it's like days here and there, it's very much more a, a sort of client you know um supplier client relationship yeah. um and then that sort of goes for plumbing as well or that if it's what i would rather be um dealing with is more of a sort of user slash fan sort of like interaction where it's like and the big difference there is they can send me emails asking for stuff but i still get to make the decision about what it's going to be i don't have to sort of pander to a client kind of like saying how they want something to be yeah. or what the priorities are i can sort of look at what's coming in and what people are interested in and what people ask for but also apply my own judgment to how much of that i take on board and how much of it i just sort of go yeah whatever i don't actually have to do what you're telling me to do i mean even in the world of your brother the plumber i yeah. think for I mean, I ask my plumber, like if I've got a good plumber I'll, and I need something done, um, I need an electrician, I will ask a trusted other tradesman, you mm. know, another skilled worker. Do you know, is there an electrician you work with, anyone you'd recommend? Yeah. Um, so it's that sort of, so part, I think partnerships are very important because mm. you also need to, I think for those moments when it is hard to get motivated, Yeah. I think I personally find it helpful to have people I am, I'm sort of, I feel a responsibility to, like a team mm. of a sort of a, a fake yeah. team, basically, or, you know, where you sort of go, oh, I'd be very embarrassing if I wouldn't be fulfilling my part of the arrangement if I didn't yeah, yeah. do that thing, uh, rather than, because I, I mean, but then neither you nor I are particularly the kind of people that would be bothered that our boss you know, if we strolled into work at 10 o'clock in the morning and got a dirty look from a boss figure, we'd be like, what? what's your problem? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but no, but no, but it's good to be accountable to someone else. And this is like yeah. actually before the podcast, I was sort of like meeting up with Charlene quite regularly because she's sort of like writing a book and doing and we were both sort of in a similar kind of space in terms of yeah, just yeah, sort yeah. of having to stay motivated and productive. <laughs> well, yeah. um, and so we'd sort of like check in with each other. And I, I think I, I just I think the podcast <laughs> now I'm sort of talking to you every week. I've got a bit less of a need for that, but I should go and I should sort of like I haven't spoken to for a while actually um but um you know it's good to sort of have someone else in your life that is maybe that you can just be accountable to and sort of report back to uh, or just start a podcast and report back to your podcast (laughs) well my my new friend that i'm my new friendship that is blossoming with my the person i I got to listen to the podcast the other day she's Mm. a writer she's just published her Mm. first book and she's working on the second book and we were talking about how um uh, like she, she was saying, you know, oh, I don't know when I work. The weather's changed. It's much nicer to be in the sea. When, when shall I write? What shall I do? How do I create that? Mm. And I was like, well, you know, because we we work and it's we have quite good discipline. Of that, a lot of that comes from Nick. Believe me, like he he's worked mm. for so many years at home in an office yeah. with no one else watching that he is a hunt. You know, I'm. I, you know, he's a hundred percent disciplined in a way yeah. that, you know, that I find more difficult. Um, you know, he gets very anx- anxious if he hasn't sat down at nine o'clock because then's the rules. Right, yeah. 
Yeah, uh, yeah. Whereas I'm like, yeah, I'm just going to have another cup of tea and then I'll go sit on the sofa. But this, then equally, I'll quite happily work at 11 o'clock at night if the if the muse yeah. takes me. Whereas he's like, well, no, it's not work time now. So... Yeah, well, I'm with Nick on that. I think it's important to set up boundaries and stick to them. Like, the first time I quit my job to pursue my dreams, 2008, that's the first thing I, uh, first thing I did was, right, I'm going to get dressed, leave the house in the morning, get a coffee and come back and sit at my desk at 9 o'clock every morning mm. and um, just keep that time... But then it's actually quite, if you're trying to make music and like you're sitting at your desk at nine o'clock on Monday morning, it doesn't really feel like you're going to be that Making creative. Making music, yeah, 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 yeah. Um, but that's, you know, I, but certainly for a lot of things, I, I think it's quite important to maintain the boundaries and not slip too much into kind of using, like working late at night. Um, but I think, you know, sometimes you sort of talk to someone and they, you know, they don't get dressed until sort of, three in the afternoon and they stay up late and I just think that's I don't know doesn't seem that sustainable to me I think you've got to be professional you've got to like if you're going to do that for someone else that's paying you why the hell wouldn't you do that for yourself yeah, yeah, I mean, we we now have a lot. We have a child. We have responsibilities. Mm-hmm. We've got a finite amount of childcare. We have yeah. to, you know, that punctuates the day quite usefully. Um, yeah, but I. Uh, but equally, like talking to this woman who's a writer, I was saying, well, sometimes, you know, going for a walk is really helpful to, you know, you mm-hmm. kind of like can't sort something out in your head. You need to go for a little walk or, you know, I do in Brighton. I used to take the dog around the block or something or just kind of go, I'm not getting anywhere. I need to stop because at yeah, work yeah. you would wander over to a colleague's desk and sort yeah, of go. Yeah. Um, she just said, the thing is, as a writer, if I'm not actually writing that, the sentences have to get written down. <laughs> That's like <laughs> yeah, a but, critical but, part of the delivery. <laughs> yeah, 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 but taking breaks is a discipline in itself, and yeah. especially when you're working on your own thing, you'll, you'll, you'll. You you can it's it's like programming or something like that. You can just realise you can not look up and it's you know seven p.m. and you've been there since nine a.m. and like you're. It's very easy to kind of like get and and then you you can end up causing problems for yourself if you don't take breaks. So I think the forest app is quite good for that. Like set it you know just every twenty minutes. Like it's good like twenty five minutes, five minutes is quite a hard routine to get into. So it's quite useful to sort of just do that because those little breaks are so important for for sort of keeping you from going down some stupid rabbit hole and yeah, doing yeah, the wrong yeah. thing and certainly i mean just in my day job in my contract i've got four days left but um on fr- yes. on thursday i was very proud of myself for sort of like taking a break and realizing that the thing that i was gonna end up writing a load of weird awkward code to fix a bug i realized no wait and uh, just kind of like did a little search and realized I could just put this one line of code in that would then bootstrap everything that I was looking for and it would just work and and it was I was very proud of this little kind of bug fix because it was like that's that's the difference but I wouldn't have even kind of fixed it that way if I hadn't taken a break and just been a bit more relaxed yeah. and I think that's one of the hardest things for me is like just um allowing myself a bit of slack allowing myself a bit of inefficiency yeah and it's easier to be, I, I, I do find it easier to allow myself a bit of inefficiency when I'm working for someone else because I sort of like, I'm not, it's not like every single second of my time I need to be trying to squeeze some sort of value out. Whereas it's like, well, I know I'm going to get paid for today, even if I'm a bit sleepy, at, you know, three in the afternoon. Um, and it's not quite, it's a different sort of pressure when it's your own pressure and you're not seeing where that income is coming from yet. Yeah, I think my, I think, see, I think I, I personally, for my thinking, need those inefficiency cycles that you've, ca- you've just called them. Yeah. I, and I have, but I have this slight problem that when I'm deli- doing a project for somebody else, I'll go, I need, you know, I need, I'm not sure, it's not straight in my head yet exactly what I need to do for this project. I need to read some stuff and have a think about it, mull it over, that sort of, I don't know, the, you know, the, the sort of thinking inefficiency cycle. But then I go, hmm. well, I just won't build them for today. And then I let yeah, the project slip. Yeah, and you can do that slip, sometimes, yeah. But I, I think I fall, I, I kind of justify not feeling like, you know, where, so the discipline part sometimes I'm like, well... 
I'll just not count today as working for them and then it doesn't matter that I spent too long thinking about it or but then I still don't write it down like actually that delivery you know what you were saying about shipping the Mm. discipline to ship I mean that's why partnering with Nick helps me because I will think about things for a lot longer than he will and yeah if we meet in the middle we Mm. end up with a better product that that ships (laughs) yeah you gotta ship like you gotta gotta otherwise you just don't learn like people if you just get bogged down in trying to make some perfect thing before you show it to the world like that's that's just you know that's fear that's procrastination but like if you have one of those days where you sort of like just don't build them i think um so, so I, I have done that. I, I, you know, I've done this on this project where I've just been like, today is just a write-off and I've just not managed to do anything. So, Or like, I, I, I think this is, I can't charge for a full day. So I'll charge a half day for this and just let myself off. Um, she always feels very expensive to do, but like, sometimes it's just necessary. But if it is something where you've turned up and you're thinking about it and you're, even if you're not productive, but you're feeling the sort of stress of it, <laughs> you're yeah. feeling like you're feeling their problems, right? And yeah, I think that's yeah. something that is something you're that they need to pay you for. Like even if you haven't got anything to show for it, like the fact that their your, their problems are your problems this morning. So even if you didn't manage to give them anything, it's still it's it's the same as that like availability. Like I can't, I haven't been very productive because maybe there wasn't much to do, but. I was also not available to anyone else to do anything else. So, you, you know, you need to yeah. pay for my time. Kind yeah, of I find that. I mean, I think the uh, what you're saying about their problems being... Because, you know, I, invariably people are inviting me along because they have a problem <laughs> that needs to be solved. Yeah. And if it, was, if it was something that was really super obvious, then they wouldn't need... Or, you know, maybe if it was, I don't know, yeah, maybe you're right. They I mean, if, if, if a person I'm, to come in and solve that, you know, come up with some creative solution, right? But I yeah, but if they've got, because um, at the same time, that whilst I can be quite hard on myself for not making anything or not writing enough down yeah. or whatever, I don't know, measuring the output of, of thinking is quite hard. <laughs> yeah. If someone's working for me and they have a day like that, doesn't bother me in the slightest. Do you know, mm. I'm not, I would probably cancel them the same way that you just said, yeah, but you were still thinking about their problem. <laughs> yeah. And it's like, so if somebody was on my team and they're like, oh, I've just got nowhere today, I'd be like, well, you have days like that, that's okay. You know, still, mm. put, you can't necessarily sit down and spit out the perfect solution. Yeah, it can definitely be fits and starts yeah. um, in some of these areas. But yeah, okay, all right, well, thank you for that. (laughs) (laughs) You know, this forest app you say you're using it for, how are you using it again? The one, well, you recommended oh, it I know to I me. did, but how are you... Because uh, I know I, I just... <laughs> sorry. I know. I in fact, just, my students uh, recommended my The biggest procrastinator in the world ever on my course, she yeah. recommended yeah. it to me. <laughs> okay, well, it just, it just shows you... Okay, 25 minutes, plant a tree, plant the tree, try and work for that time, and then um, have a five-minute break, and then have a 25-minute. So it's like Pomodoro technique, but with trees. So oh. tomatoes. I and then see. every so often it says, oh, now have a, you know, and then every so often I have a, you know, half hour break or an hour break. Um, I think 25 5 is, you know, pretty good. Like you feel like you're getting a lot of breaks, but you, and it, uh, you sort of feel more productive as well. And also you start to unlock things. So I unlock the mushroom. Oh, I see. I can now choose between a tree and a mushroom. Wow. This bad you- boy. <laughs> Little spotted mushroom. Wow. Have you got uh, pay for things, on, you know? Does no, I haven't paid. No, I'm no. just trying to because it's quite slow with the rewards. But like, I think that's good. Like, it just means that hopefully you keep using it and stay in that discipline. Because like, eventually you'll get a new little thing to grow, like a mushroom. Mm. Okay. All right. Okay. Okay. So let's talk about goals. So something I'm trying to do this this time round. So last couple of years I've had sort of prolonged periods of doing my own thing but I I was very much it was quite exploratory 
even though I will always kind of go through these things like, what am I actually trying to do? Try and visualise success, that sort of thing. But it was more sort of an artistic drive. Uh, this time I'm like, uh, I'm trying to replace contracting now. So all that time that I would put into contracts, I need to put that 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 time into like making getting my business going and um, so I've been trying to be quite sort of goal orientated with it and sort of set myself financial targets so I've got yeah. my sort of various and I think I've probably got too many goals at the moment still so I might I mean the list I, I I've, I've been using Coda like I was showing you earlier like I've been putting together quite a sort of detailed document of my progress and little charts and little kind of um lists of, of what I'm trying to achieve. So I've set myself, like my Patreon, my MF, Michael Forrest Patreon is one thing that I want to kind of bring up to the next tier. The Grand Podcast Patreon is, so these are all actual sources of income I'm thinking about. So my goal is like, yeah. get the Patreons going, get the YouTube revenue going and get the app sales going. Um, and hopefully that will be enough. The blank state stuff and all that kind of like actually do something good in the world. I, I was not sure whether I should just whether I should be doing that purely altruistically or whether I should tie that back into a... Like, I, the goal is to have it pay for itself a bit, which means yeah. Patreon support, I think, or something like that. So I've set that into the... So my first, my next goal on that is one pound from zero, right? So sometimes yeah, yeah. just going from zero to anything is the biggest, uh, biggest yeah, step. Yeah, 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 yeah. App revenue, I want to multiply by 10 next. Like, music streams and sales are currently two pounds a month and i'd quite like to get that to 10 pounds a month next um and then like youtube ad revenue is currently zero and i'm next i want to get that to one by getting these four thousand hours and i'm currently like 36 percent of the way towards that i need a big video and then i'll start getting some so money from my you YouTube. get money from hours that it's been listened to uh on youtube yeah Views, what? yeah, like you get paid for, you know, you can put ads on things and then also I think because there's now this paid YouTube, like I, I've got YouTube premium now, like I just was like, fine. <laughs> <laughs> so much, it's like £17 a month. Wow. But um, I do watch YouTube quite a lot every day and just the ads are a bummer. So, um, and I think they've been ramping them up as well. But I think the fact that, because you used to be able to just monetize videos and like generally, but then I think they sort of like gated it a bit more because now there's this, there's a bit more of a consistent stream coming in for people. So even if you didn't have ads on, you can still get paid because for your content. Um, and actually YouTube is probably the only platform that might actually give you some money. Like, Facebook videos, forget about it. They're getting that. They're pocketing that uh, ad revenue, all of it. You don't get nothing for putting your video on Facebook. At least YouTube gives you some cash. So they're sort of like my goals and then all my tasks, my projects, I, I've got to like tie them back into that now. So mm. when I think, oh, I kind of, kind of want to make some uh, procedurally generated mushrooms, it's like, okay, why am I doing that? <laughs> <laughs> I guess it's to build my YouTube channel. Okay, so I've got to think about how that's going to make a good video. You know, that kind of that kind of thing. Yeah. Um, so, but I think maybe fewer goals would be better. Just, like, but then I think like if you are the, the you know the com the converse of that the, the the counterpoint to being goal orientated is like sometimes you can't immediately see what where it's going and you've just got to do something that you feel there's something to it. Um, and the, the, you'll figure out the money later, so, like the Facebook thing. Like, you, I'm just going to get users, and that's the whole the way the whole VC thing runs, isn't it? It's like we're yeah. we just we're getting attention. We don't know what that means in terms of uh, money yet, but attention means ads, right? So, yeah, yeah, yeah. But if you can, uh, if you get, if you, sometimes like it's a bit counterproductive to try and attribute every single little thing you're doing to potential revenue because it's sometimes it doesn't work like that most yeah. of the time it doesn't work like that probably it's about sprinkling love into something yeah yeah have you done a, a youtube ad for your channel an ad yeah no i advertised one because i thought it was quite a good one but i i uh, haven't really I, I haven't really got something that explains what it is concisely hmm. and I, 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 I don't know i don't know what I may, I may do I may do that and in fact that would be a good way of getting the views up <laughs> like I could just pay for some views <laughs> well, in fact yeah. I'm going to write that in my uh, little ideas list because <laughs> you can cap that um, I mean the thing about Google pay-per-click stuff 
You can yeah. do now a YouTube video. And, I mean, you've always been able to, but you can do a YouTube video, limit the budget, make it quite low. Um, but I think it would be, I think it would work quite well for get, getting people to your content because your content's mm. interesting and you can do the uh, the audience targeting. So you're not going to show it to people who don't give a stuff about making things out of music, you yeah, know, making yeah. things make music. So. Yeah, yeah. I no, I did, I did, um, I did set one up. I don't know what happened to it, but I, I also try. I, I'm also, I've also, I also tried to make my stuff. I'm trying to make it so that it's something people will be searching for. Like that's another thing. Like if people kind of want to find a video about something, you, there's certain keywords that kind of plug you into a niche. So like modular synths is quite a good keyword to be connected yeah, into. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm fairly bedded into that now. So, um, yeah, but I, I think some... I don't know, what, I started this ad, but I can't remember if I actually ran it. Right. Well, you only need um, 30 seconds of something. Like, you know, where you... You know, when you... Uh, if you wanted to reach a wider audience, things like that clip of you, when you talk about what your alien's name is, that kind yeah. of thing. There's just a <laughs> okay, bit yeah, like... It's a little... You know, just try it. Well, I should, I should make a channel trailer, really. Um yeah. Maybe I'll put that down as in, in the list. Okay, now we're brainstorming things for Michael to do, which I like, but <laughs> does the listener? Who knows? So goal-wise, what, what, have you got anything to say about goals? Goals? I've struggled with goals. I'm like, I'm a bit mm -hmm. of a... As we've discussed previously, my commitment phobia sometimes yeah. makes it quite difficult for me to set actual specific goals because uh, um, I, I suffer a bit that thing where I want to do, first of all, I want to do loads and loads and loads and loads of things. So choosing specific mm -hmm. goals. Yeah. Um, I find it quite useful now that I have a child where, and obviously there is a finite amount of time where she's going to be little and want to have me sit and read stories for her endlessly and things like that. So I am kind of able to make goal number one, making sure I leave time to do things with my child. Um, mm. uh, but things like, you know, like I would like to, I think we could make, I think I spread myself too thin. With the time mm. that I have, I need to be more ruthless and go, look, Ivanka, there's no way you can do a uh, grand podcast and this and that and that and that. And so it's like, right, OK, so I'm committed to grand podcast. How do I look at making grand podcast make do more for me, both financially, mm. maybe like with Patreons and things, or just like we've talked about, I would, I really must. In fact, it's not that I would love to, you know, we talked about going through some of the content and creating some blog posts or articles around it. That is yeah. exactly what I would like to do. I just need to put the yeah. time in the same way that I've put the time in my calendar to do the podcast. I think yeah. I need to block out time in my calendar when I'm working on a blog post to accompany the podcast or when I'm going to do some, um, uh, yes, I agree. you know, do you know what I mean? That's, that's the thing that I, I don't, I'm like, Oh, look, shiny thing. And off I go. Um, the things that I can't weasel out of in any way with any yeah. of my, Oh, look, shiny thing is, you know, like all the restaurants, Brighton stuff that I do is kind of, uh, you know billing and invoicing that's the thing we haven't talked mm. about as well is that's right, actually yes. quite time consuming um even yeah, when you're just admin. managing your own clients admin yeah. making sure that accountants got everything make sure everything's being billed make sure you've chased the people that haven't paid you all that sort of stuff arranging yeah. bit, you know it, it takes time um, so there's always this risk as well when you're only working a few short days that you don't spend most of that time administering <laughs> Your, th you know, you spent you're working three days. And you spent one day on admin. It's not practical at all. And I've been guilty of that a lot. <laughs> like on Friday, I had like a a, a, a day. I, I did a lot. I modelled a town hall in 3D, and I did do a couple of other Excellent. things. But I spent a lot of time tinkering with my little uh, goal planning, you know, task list spreadsheet, trying to uh, just like oh, you know, as I kept having little ideas for it, and then it would be like quite awkward to figure out how to do it, and then. 
Like before yeah, you know yeah, it. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. So that the tinkering, arranging, following up, not spending enough time following up. And, you know, yeah. like I said, a lot of the, I've, I've started talking, I'll save this conversation for another podcast, but I started talking to an academic friend of mine who's done a lot of work looking at sus- sort of um, sustainability in design, in creative practice and communities and mm. how that can help us adapt in a changing a climate changey world and I'm looking forward to talking about that in more detail but I had to but I had to be very honest with that but I also I've known her a long time I was like I really need to have a kickoff phone call with you I will not have had time to read your stuff properly so I need to set expectations that this phone call will be sort of vacuous (laughs) in some ways you know I won't be able to add any useful content except I want to understand why you want to talk to me and why we could work together on something do you know what I mean so it's like um and and we I have half an hour and I can give you half an hour and I I um, am I think time management really is so so critical when you're going to work for yourself yeah yeah here's a, and also like i think the inverse of that is like keeping track like noting down what you did every day <laughs> like you don't have a time yeah. sheet or a daily stand-up but like i try and kind of keep doing that because i want to look because it's very easy to feel like you've done nothing for a month but actually you've been very busy and working on a lot of things but because you don't have that record of it it just kind of all goes out of your mind very quickly yeah um, yeah, yeah, that's but, a what yeah, that's definitely yeah. So yeah, those are mm. my these are the things I struggle with. Yeah. Um, well, I think and you've said emails and conversations, I like admin stuff, but like something I think like something where I do badly is I hate dealing I hate doing emails. I, I just yeah. hate like it's really it's really that's probably the hardest sort of like mode for me to switch is from solving a technical problem or trying out an idea to oh I've got these emails I need to reply to and once yeah. I'm in that emailing mode I, 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 I'm like give me more emails to send like <laughs> I just start like plowing through them because <laughs> I've got myself into the sort of like social mindset but so, so sometimes I say like well I should sort of set aside an hour a day to do emails but the problem with that is that there's an intrinsic external unpredictable dependency on all that that yeah. sort of like conversations with other people have to be you have to be able, but it's very hard when something's going to come in at random when someone else happens to reply and reconciling that with the the cost of shifting into that social mindset from that sort of like production you know head down mindset i i find it yeah. very hard to I just end up with a build-up of emails that I've never got back to. I think this is quite common. I don't know how yeah. to formalise that, how to make that a, a habit or a procedure or, like, when to put it in the calendar beyond just setting meetings sometimes. Well, I, 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 that's my, I have a real problem with email in that sense that it comes in and it sort of has this feed me, you know... Many people seem to have this expectation. As soon as they email you, you're going to respond. And then they go, yeah. well, I emailed you yesterday and you haven't responded. It's like, well, <laughs> um, you know, and then I, then I feel, I just, I've kind of, I almost feel like I, I did read an article once where somebody talked about that you should set two hours in your day if you're not in a full-time job in an office and go, right, you do respond to email between nine and 10 and maybe two and three and five and six or whatever. Mm. Um, and I, I feel tempted sometimes to put an out of office on my email to say that, you know, I deal with yeah. emails between nine and 10 in the morning, unless, you know, if it's really urgent, phone me. Um, because yeah. you know what well, I don't understand because it does it totally shifts your mode especially if you're working across multiple projects yeah. you're like well I'm not working on that your project today and <laughs> so I don't really want to think about it because today I'm thinking about how the hell I'm going to get more people to sign up to host refugees <laughs> it's like yeah. you know it's, it's not so I don't I, don't, I, I find it I, I'm not very good at email in a, <laughs> yeah, nice. I'm having a bit of a like beat then, myself. I'm not really good at I'm, no. I'm the inefficiency cycles, and I'm not very no. good at email. But I hate it. Whoever invented it, and even the mobile phone, <laughs> you know, it's like a, it's just Stop just because just because you can phone me does not mean that I have to talk to you now. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, but th- th- this or? comes back to this comes back to the like manager time versus maker time problem which is like managers want you know if you're if you're in the business of talking to people it's like you want hour long slots whereas a person who does stuff like programming or 
you know production or whatever needs four hour slots so yeah. when I hear like 10 to 11 that's like then I've only got a three hour slot so I've got to figure out a way of having you know whereas if all of your time is meetings then it, I think it's a lot more fun because you can just kind of like try and yeah, block yeah. out your whole calendar you've got little slack times where you can like travel or like meander around yeah. and have a little think whereas if you're sort of the rest of your time is I've got to kind of get this working it's 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 a bit it's a lot more jarring kind of going from boss mode to worker mode. Yeah, yeah, that's true. That's true. I mean, when I was uh, at Canonical, I was full on manager, and so therefore yeah. it was just Tetris, fill your day with yeah. slots yeah. of things that have that hour. Right, you're going to get yeah. this much attention now. We're going to make this productive, yeah. and then as soon as I've finished this talking to you, I'm done mm. on this topic, and I'm going to move on to the yeah. next topic for an hour slot. <laughs> uh, it's a completely different way of being, really. I had not registered in my brain this phrase "maker time, manager time," which actually mm. I think is a real nice way of thinking about it. I got an email this week uh, oh, to yeah. blankstate.org, hello at blankstate.org, oh, uh, yeah. from someone in Belgium, Xavier, who was like, uh, he likes my music videos and uh, came across my uh, the Blank State project and is very keen to kind of get involved. Wow. And hello, he sounds Xavier. like another polymath type. <laughs> Hi, Xavier. Um, um, so, and then that what ra- reminded me, because I was like, okay, well, I'm going to just say I set an, an hour for a meeting at some point and it'd be good to get like you know i think that's the way that's the, that's the only way to sort of like make it a, a discipline is just to schedule a meeting and mm. so i think maybe even just like scheduling that coffee with someone every week is just it's, for me it just has to go in the calendar or it's it's yeah. probably not going to happen um totally agree you know, you know what i mean but yeah yeah yeah, like yeah, yeah. A, that's why I, I was like with yeah, with this um, professor lady, I, the, uh, I'll talk about her probably soon, but she, um, I was like, look, let's just put 20 minutes. She's like, I've got to finish at nine o'clock because I've got an important phone call. I was like, fine, we'll just take this half at eight once it's in. And then we've booked a follow up for after she comes back from somewhere. Yeah. But it's like, OK, if we have to move it in the calendar, that's fine. But it's in the calendar. It, it's occupying some space so yeah. we can come back to it and not let it, you know, be six months because I think what she's yeah. doing is very interesting, very different to our um, silver gun hypothesis. But uh, it's, mm. uh, I think, very useful to get out in the world and positive. So, mm. um, so yeah, so yeah, cool, slots cool. in calendars. Yeah. I important. think slots in calendars, but maybe like maybe the trick I'm missing is recurring slots in calendars because it works for the podcast. It works it's yeah. ones that don't get cancelled like re- recurring things maybe, maybe just like if i talk to someone then i should just at the t- like always book the next but always book the follow-up then because otherwise yeah. it, it tends to slip um so i might just uh maybe that's a trick maybe that's a trick you can try listener either make <laughs> it recurring or always book the next one yeah <laughs> if you're anything uh, like us <laughs> yeah so um there you go that's what we've done conclusions conclusions what's it like working for yourself versus working for someone else blimey is it better it's uh, it's completely different <laughs> i mean i have to say there is something incredibly comforting about every, the same day every month money magically appearing in your oh, bank God. account that sort of stuff <laughs> is nice but working for yourself allows I, I don't I don't know at, in the, for the foreseeable future I can't imagine myself getting back into that sort of routine of going into work working for somebody else. In fact, I see the the, the rest of my life really as a refinement mm. on working for myself. So as my life circumstances mm. change, I just see myself modifying how I work so that it continues to suit me because I can't really see myself retiring in that sort of like yeah yeah me neither so yeah. it's like not not because I but I, I can see myself wanting to spend more time doing I don't know making jam I'm really enjoying my garden <laughs> my garden is amazing um uh, and I'm very proud of my cabbages <laughs> which I should put mm. on I will put on the Instagram at some point, but you know, it's like, so I, so I can see myself wanting to balance out my time differently, but I can't mm. see myself ever not wanting to be pursuing some intellectual activity that makes yeah. something, you know? Yeah. 
So, yeah, that's what I say. Yeah, I'd like to just destroy my CV and never have to justify myself to anyone ever again. But that's probably a bit of a pipe dream, isn't it? Um, but this is this is this is the appeal of it to me. It's like I, I just want to. I think it's. I find it difficult and frequently demoralising. <laughs> and um, I don't know. Like I don't know what it is. It's like I, I just keep coming back. I'm, I'm tr trying to brace myself for that whole. Not just having someone singing my praises at work on a regular basis, yeah. right? Like not having someone that gives a shit about what I've just done goes, oh, that was that was good work. Like, I'm not going to get that. I'm not going to get that easy. I'm not going to, like, I just, it was really nice in San Francisco just being kind of pushed into doing that little talk, having to do like yeah. a five minute, 10 minute presentation and just getting that little, making some people, a room laugh and making, <laughs> getting a little round of applause, like getting those little, those little things and, and then actually getting paid like regularly just I'm gonna miss all that but I know that it's not enough it's not the right thing it's not me um so I sort of like with a lot of decisions that I make it's like well uh, my emotional architecture is not allowing me to be happy doing this <laughs> so I've sort of got no choice but to sort of do the more difficult scary thing because like at least that has the potential to make me feel like I'm using what I you know using what I have in a in an effective way um rather than being sort of painted into some narrow little box and I would rather have much less money than you know uh feel like I wasn't doing something meaningful and well, I think I, I don't know if I'm a good boss but I try to be nice to myself. I think you've got to be kind. You've got to be, if you're your own boss, you've got to try and be a good boss, a good, kind manager to yourself and not give yourself a hard time if you have a bad, you know, a day where you didn't do very much. Yeah, I also, I've, I also think that you uh, solving that, what you're talking about, uh, if you were to make yourself go off and do meetups and do talks and do things, you would get that and it would benefit your work. So there yeah, are other yeah, ways of fulfilling that whole praise. Yeah, and I actually, like, when I did happiness, at, when I was focused on that, like, that was when I was getting asked to do these talks then and, and actually it was like I was able to talk about the thing I'm doing that I came up with and that was yeah. that was, that was cool. Um, you know, I'd sort of be in Shoreditch and find a little paper and it had my picture in it. Like yeah. Some local sort of little, the protein, Mac, like I did this talk at protein and, like... Um, and, you know, just found it in a bar. And I was like, hey, look. <laughs> um, look, I'm, a, I'm someone. It's me. Um, I'm not nothing. <laughs> um, but, yeah, so, 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 yes. So there yes. we go. I wouldn't recommend it to anyone, but... And, but, yeah, so all I'd say is like, you, you've got to try and be a good boss to yourself, and that's something that most people don't really know how to do. Don't micromanage yourself, for God's sake. <laughs> I don't Right, thanks for listening. If you like the podcast, go to grandpodcast.com and subscribe if you haven't already. There's an orange button that's available before the very slow page even loads. So have a go at that. Where can people find you, Ivanka? People can find me at Ivanka on Twitter. And I'm delighted to report that I watched the orange button work live the other day. Last night, Woo! in fact, with my mum's friend. She was like, what is this podcast you speak of? And I said, she's on an Android phone. And she just went... Um, I just said, oh, just go to grandpodcast.com. And she said, oh, there you go. I've done it. I've done it. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> it worked auto magically. Uh, but also, Wonderful. yeah, take the time to, to write some reviews and star ratings and all that kind of jazz that helps people find us. Tell your friends. Mm. Don't be embarrassed. Yeah. It's us that are putting ourselves out there. <laughs> <laughs> Excellent. Also, you can find me at michaelforestmusic.com, blankstate.org, goodtohear.co.uk, um, donegood.app. Um, what else? Um, getgigradio.com and squares.tv. Wow. <laughs> That's my domains. That's all my domains. So that I many domains. Um, Sharon's going to get us um, carboncarrot.com. Oh, is she? Yeah. <laughs> she wanted to buy the domain. I was like, okay, if you want. 
Um, I thought that was, that's available and I thought it was quite good. Carbonecarrot.com. It's fun Brilliant. to say. It is, uh, it is. Uh, so, yeah. Um, anything else? Come to our page. Please, you know, you can be our second ever Patreon supporter. Oh, what do you yeah. Think? Yep. If you've got something out of this, cough up a little bit of support. <laughs> Ooh, cough up. <laughs> Why not just... Uh, well, well, like, we could thank our supporters each week, couldn't we? We could. Thanks to Sharon for supporting us. Do you want to be in that Sharon. list? You can be. Personal thank you every every week until the list gets too long to do that and then you're just going to have to pay more. So <laughs> that's it's not a sustainable state of affairs. <laughs> or we just have a really long outro. Um, but yeah, so thanks for listening. We'll see you next time. Uh, have a good one. Bye. Thank you. Bye, bye, bye. 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 bye.